I'm Heather from Tiller. In part five of our Getting Started with Tiller video series, I'll explore how budgeting works with the Tiller Foundation template and show you how Tiller's budgets can help you stay on track with reaching your financial goals. If you want to learn more about budgeting with Tiller, visit tillerhq.com slash budgeting. So now let's talk a little bit about how to use Tiller for budgeting. So the first step to getting your budget set up in the foundation template here is to head over to the category sheet, tab along the bottom here, and to set some budget targets in column E. By default, column E is set up for January of the current year. Doesn't matter if it's January, you can still set the budget targets in column E and those are gonna cascade out to the right. So it's gonna pre-fill your budget for the entire year in minutes. It's super easy and super fast to get your budget set up for the whole year. So let's say that my car insurance is due every six months. So if I set it here in January for 600, it's gonna, like I said, cascade out to the right. I don't really need it to be set to 600 for every month because it's only due once every six months. So I can zero out January and then I can pick the specific month that it's actually due in and set the target for that month. So let's say it's due in June, this particular month, and we'll just set it to 600. And then we can see that that cascading, which is just a simple formula referencing the previous cell, is gonna pick back up in the next cell. So I'll just set the subsequent cell to zero. So I set it for July to be zero so that the rest of the month picks up with the correct amount because I don't, I'm not spending $600 every month for car insurance. But I do need to spend another $600 in December probably for that car insurance. So I'll set it to 600 in December and then we're all set for that particular category. Now the rest of them are probably a little bit easier because I don't have those, you know, it's only every six month kind of thing. So I can just start filling those in. So you know, fees, repairs, and maintenance. Maybe I don't have that every month, so I'm going to leave it zero. But if I've got that upcoming maintenance plan, same kind of thing. I can set it to that particular month when I need it. Gas for my car, let's say that's about 50 bucks a month. We can see when I set it to 50 here in January, it automatically moves across to the right for every subsequent month. So I've got that one set up for the whole year. Now, do I really need a closing gear budget every month? Probably not, but I know how my spending is, so I'm just going to give myself a $100 budget for that every month. I've got some trips coming up. I might need some new gear. Give myself a little bit of fun money. Not quite $500. let us just do $50. And we can see that that cascades out to the right. So you can see how quick and easy it is to set these budget targets here in column E in the category sheet. It's the same exact steps for Microsoft Excel. This just happens to be Google Sheets, but the template works exactly the same for setting your budget targets in Microsoft Excel. Now let's say I have no idea what these targets need to be. A quick way to get a baseline for what you might wanna spend on your budgets for your particular categories is to go to the monthly budget sheet and you can flip back to last month. So in this case, that's May, for example, and then I can look at what I actually spent. So here in column G on the monthly budget, I can see my actuals for each category. And that's gonna help me set a baseline for each of those categories if I really have no idea. Now I've spent the time categorizing the transactions for last month, so just keep that in mind from the previous video or so ago, we categorize all that transaction data from the previous month, so that made this analysis possible. For those actuals for last month. Some things are not going to change like your mortgage payment, your cell phone bill, maybe like those are fixed. They're really easy to set here on the category sheet. But for the variable expenses, the discretionary expenses, those might change month to month. And so the monthly budget can be a helpful tool just looking at those actuals. So I'm going to spend some time filling in these monthly budget numbers to just go ahead and get my budget all set up. So I've got all my budget targets set up here in the category sheet in column E. So what's next? Now we can take a look at the monthly and yearly budget sheets to understand that plan, those budgets that we set on the category sheet. So I'm gonna flip to the current month. And so we can see here the planned cash flow. This is based on all of those budget targets that we set in the category sheet. If we spend exactly as much as we plan to spend and earn exactly as much as we plan to earn, we're gonna have about $1,062 left over this month if everything goes according to plan. Now, cash flow to date for this month, that's all based on our actuals. So how much we've earned 
minus how much we've spent and what's left over. Now the month's not over, so this number is gonna move around a lot. It's gonna ebb and flow as money comes in and money comes out. It's really most helpful at the end of the month. It's a great way to kind of close out the month and see how we actually did, how much money was left over at the end of the month based on what we earned and what we spent. We get some insights about our spending budget, how much we're planning to spend versus our spending actual, how much we've actually spent based on those categorized transactions up to today, our income budget, how much we're planning to earn, and our income actual, how much we've actually earned based on those categorized transactions up to today. If we scroll down, we can get a breakdown of our budget by type, income expense, as well as group, and then the category for each group. So we can see that roll up of, you know, for our entire discretionary group, what is our budget? How much did we actually spend so far? And how much is available in that budget? And then for each category, we get a breakdown of the budget versus actual and then what's left over. For any categories that are in the red, we see that we're over budget or we didn't even set a budget. And so in this case, like gifts, for example, you know, I'm about $70 over because I didn't I didn't anticipate spending money on gifts this month. Maybe it was just something thoughtful I bought for someone. And that's okay, as long as we are understanding where that money is going and understanding, you know, just being aware of the money that we're spending that's going out, that's the key here with budgeting. There's not a, you know, there's no perfect budgeting. It's really just building that awareness to keep on top of where your money's going is the key there. As we get into the yearly budget, we see the entire year, the entire 12 month year that we have selected based on the year here and the month here. This is a 12 month view based on these selections. It just defaults to whatever the start month and year is on the category sheet, for example. So we see it's defaulting to January 2024, but we can actually customize this if we wanted to look at a different 12 month view, we can do that. Um, it's not changing anything on the category sheet. It's just changing the, it's kind of like a slider of those 12 months. Um, so we'll set it back to January just to take a look. This is going to give us our entire year based on that plan. So we get January through December, our budgeted cash flow, how much we would have left over if everything went according to plan, as well as our actual cash flow based on year to date, what our earning and our spending has been. And this is a pretty good reflection of what's been saved. It may not account for transfers of actual savings and things like that, but in this scenario, you know, there's $2,200 basically that has been saved so far year to date based on uh, categorized transactions. So we can review, we can use a scroll bar here in the Google Sheet to kind of move out to the right to understand the differences in budgeted cash flow month over month, kind of see our spending month over month. Um, we can see here, for example, in June, the budgeted cash flow was different than that of May and that of July. And that's because of that car insurance payment in the previous video that we talked about, we set that unique amount for that month. We can see how changes like that when anticipated can affect that budgeted cash flow and help us plan out different budgeting scenarios. So it's a super helpful tool for really customizing your budget and understanding how your year is gonna go. Um, if you can anticipate certain things. And if you can't anticipate certain things, are you going to be covered? It's a great way to really understand um, the impact of unexpected things happening. In our next video, we'll talk about how to set up and customize the debt payoff planner.